Hello folks, welcome back to the Airbnb and Fishing channel. I hope you're doing really well. As ever, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subs button. That way you'll be kept in touch with all the fishing, all the reviews and all the other stuff that IB and I get up to. If you're a current subscriber, thank you very much for joining us again. You're joining me here on an absolutely beautiful mid-February day in the Peak District on the Derbyshire Derwent to do some grayling fishing. I did actually try and film this video yesterday and after a quite a slow start in a couple of pools, I eventually found some fish here. Ooh, right, on the far side. Hopefully that was him shot one of the cameras. It's the first one I've seen today. It was definitely a trout, so we'll, we'll not worry about it too much. But while that happened, that indicator just slid away downstream off me. And while the rise was definitely a trout, I'm pretty sure this is a grayling. That's taken, what, four casts? Three casts? Did that indicate with the right depth to find a take? Interesting to see which fly is taken. Right, he's taken that orange collar hairs here on the top dropper. Come here, buddy. Ah, <laughs> 45 minutes in the wrong spot, two minutes in the right spot. There's a saying in there somewhere. Very lively fish. This one's probably going to jump out my hands. But a nice start, that's for sure. Sweet. Let's get back over there. Okay, I'll give that a good slather of muslin. It's much easier to mend a leader when it's floating. Once it starts to sink, those mends get more difficult and you end up Oh, there's a fish. Wow, what a take that was. That absolutely zonked under. Yeah, it's just bad to say. It's easier to, easier to mend a, a floating leader. It's def I'm pretty sure it's a grayling. It looks silvery. Come on, buddy. In you come. In you come. Yay. So don't get me wrong, they could get bigger during the course of the day, but if they don't, I don't mind too much. Nice derwent grayling. Off you go. There's a fish, a bit further across that time. Just a touch further over again, I'd say that's a grayling. Don't think it's a huge fish, but it's bites. After the way that first 45 minutes went, I'll take all the bites I can get at the moment. <laughs> was not the plan, but this is a lot more like it. He's doing an excellent job of tangling the hell out of this rig. Thank you very much for that. Yep, we're still trying. Yep, come on, come on buddy. Yeah. Bites, that's what we need, more bites. <laughs> Trying to clean the lens. <laughs> I've got water all over the camera. Literally first cast. God, what a change from that first 45 minutes where we couldn't buy a bite. Yeah, it is a grayling. Nice, 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 nice. On that pink dub grub on the point. That's been a pretty good change, that has. That's pulled us a couple of takes. In terms of size, these guys have all been peas in a pod. Oh, that one's gone away pretty quickly. There he goes. And then as I went to move again, I also managed to find some barbed wire that was underwater up against the bank and sliced a three inch gash in my waders just above the stocking foot, which meant that that was very much the end of the day with very, very cold right foot. So I've come back out again. I've got some new waders on. <laughs> Thank you very much to our local fly shop, Malin and Green, who actually stayed open late so they could help me out getting some waders sorted. I really appreciate that. Guys, look after your local tackle shops because you need them. Anytime you need anything, go to your local shop before you go to the internet if you can they are worth their weight in gold. So as I say, a day's grayling fishing on the Derwent. I've got two rods with me. I've got a 10 foot three weight Euroninfin rod set up with our Euroninfin in a box kit. It's the Vision Hero, I really like that rod. Great value for money. Uh, and I've also got a 10 foot four weight set up for indicator Nymphin using my sort of normal foam indicator system. You guys have seen us use it before. Uh, if not, I'll put a link in the description to a video that shows you how to make it. And the hope is that I'm going to find some grayling in the slightly slower, slightly deeper water. The water's very cold and it slows the metabolic rate of the fish down. And it means they're less likely to sit in fast water, particularly at this time of year when there's not as much food moving around. So the slower glides should be the sort of stuff we're looking for. I've only got a small kind of composite range of flies with me. You guys know I don't go crazy on flies. All the flies are from our urine infinite box kits. Now I'm going to just throw a very quick sales plug in here. Sorry about this. We've actually sort of revamped the kits. All the patterns are roughly the same. But there's a few patterns where we like we found some new materials, some brighter flash materials, some cooler dubbing materials, some better beads. So we've given both the clear water and the coloured water pack a little bit of a glow up this year. So you'll find all the new flies available on the website. That's enough of that for the moment. Right, guys, it is midday already. I've had a bit of a slow start. I need to get into this river and try and find some grayling. I'm starting off in the same pool that I caught the fish from last time because I want a good start. Let's see if we can find them. 
first pool of the day, second pool of the video. As I say, I, I sort of didn't want to come here straight away, but at the same time I did because I caught fish here yesterday. <laughs> I had a pretty slow start yesterday. I was, I was trying to fish the nymphy riffles and just wasn't finding fish. I came down in some slower water and immediately got takes and that's not a coincidence. As I say, at this time of year, the water's probably as cold as it's going to get. These fish aren't willing to move particularly far to feed. The feeding they are going to do, they're going to try and do it in places where they haven't got to use loads of energy. And a pool like this, that has got a bit of a feed line going down the middle, but big heavy slacks either side, can be absolutely perfect at this time of year, where those faster bits of water sometimes don't quite do it. Two flies on here, I've got a orange collar hairs here on the top dropper, and I've got a pink dub grub on the point, and they are definitely two of the flies that we've given a bit of a zhuzh, a bit of a revamp in the grayling kits. So we drift those through here. I'm set a wee bit over depth, I know I am, but don't mind that too much. It's going through okay, I'm not getting loads of kind of heavy false indications. Loads, ooh, loads of time in the water. One of the things that I really like about fishing the indicator is just how much longer you can keep the flies in the water in this slow stuff compared to if you, you're an infant. Get big long drifts out of this. So you notice I'm not trying to cast miles with this and I'm not trying to kind of traditionally fly cast it with that big indicator on there and then two nymphs. There's a lot of stuff to go wrong on this rig. So I find it much more comfortable just to keep to a kind of a medium length, three, four rod lengths at the absolute most, and just concentrate on getting shorter but good quality drifts. Stuff like mending is a lot easier on a shorter line. You're more likely to hit your takes on that shorter line because there's going to be a bit less slack. So yeah, I think sometimes people try and fish the indicator too far because it's got fly line. People feel like they've got to cast it like it's a fly line. You don't really, just these, just these little flips are enough. Okay, as I've gone across here, I've stopped seeing that ticking on the indicator. So I'm just going to make this rig a bit deeper. There's a fish just risen directly opposite me. It's almost certainly a trout. It's not something I'm going to target, but it does just tell me there are a few bugs moving around. Yeah, let's just stick the bit of extra depth back on here. Let's just see if that sees me a little bit further down in the water column. That's a fish, that's a great line as well. Interesting, so change of depth, immediate take. Now, it could just be a coincidence, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that that was entirely down to the, to the change we made there, but it's a pretty big coincidence, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely a great line, not a huge one, but nice start to the day. Just needed to go a touch further across. There we go, he's on that pink dub grub on the point. As I say, it's one of the ones that's had a bit of a a bit of a refresh, we found some cool new materials, so a little bit more sparkle on that pink dub grub. Looks fantastic, that one couldn't resist. Nice! Okay, well it took a little bit more teasing out than yesterday, I reckon we probably had a couple by the point we've been this long in this pool yesterday. It's a start, and as I say, that change may or may not be responsible for that fish, but it's a pretty big coincidence. But it's only about another 10 inches further down, but at this time of year, with the water being cold, that really can make all the difference. I can tell from the speed the indicator is going through that I'm definitely more down. You always tell you when you've got a good drift in this slower water because the indicator goes through more slowly than the... Ooh, there we go, there's a fish. Pretty sure that's a grayling as well, yeah. Okay, so they're just taking a little bit of convincing. I was starting to think there about having a little... having a little move either upstream or downstream, but that has reassured me. A slightly better fish, this one as well. It didn't look huge when I saw it flash, but he's really got his head down. Might just be because he's below me, maybe. <laughs> doing a full 360 here. Yeah, slightly bigger than the first one. On the orange collar hairs here, that one, on the top dropper. That is a slightly bigger fish than the first one. He's just, he's desperate to go back. There he goes. <laughs> okay, this is going all right. Again, that fish was a bit further across, so I think I'm going to spend a bit more time on that line over there. I actually think that's where it shelves up because I'm not getting a whole lot of ticking down the middle in the feed line. But as I go across to about where that's landed, I get a little bit more of a sign that that rig is getting down. Perhaps that's just making a difference. Ooh, stonefly going underneath the tree where I saw the rise before. You need to be careful here because I'm watching both that fly and the indicator at the same time. Nice to see bugs hatching at this time of year. Just a nice reminder in the middle of February that actually that drought season's not far away now. Another month and we're back on. I cannot wait. 
That's God, that's taking a lot of drifts. That was literally the last drift I was giving myself before I changed flies. Eventually found another one. Pretty sure it's a grayling again. It's tumbling around like a grayling. Again, we're gonna go around the around the circle again, do the full 360. Yeah, on the point fly on that pink dub grub again. There we go. Not quite as big as the as the last one. Very similar size to the first one. Nice little bright grayling. Do you know what? Even though I've just caught a fish, I'm going to make that fly change just out of curiosity. Okay, doke. So yeah, I have made that change. Well, I've made two changes. Put the pink collar pheasant tail on the top dropper and I've put the improved Duracell on the point. Again, there are two flies there that have had a pretty big change from the previous packs. We'll start with the Duracell first. Now, I used the, <laughs> I used the word improved there when we did a step-by-step -step fly, uh, how to tie these. Um, as, mu as much for the views as anything, stir up a bit of controversy, that's not taking long. <laughs> it's not a huge fish. Little grayling. We'll get him a nook straight away. It does count, by the way. When I do my tally at the end of the day, that is definitely on the scoreboard. That's on that improved joy cell that we were just talking about. Yeah, so I'm just going to go through the word improved there. Now, the joy cell was invented by a brilliant Scottish fly tie called Craig McDonald, who I talked to a fair amount. He's a really great guy, and I was very careful before we published that video calling it the improved joy cell just to say to him, look, I'm not taking the piss here. Joy cell is one of my absolute favorite patterns of all time. Um, I tie them both as Craig ties them and how we've put in the pack now with the slightly skinnier body. Uh, it's still got that great flash. It's still got the same colors as the normal jaw. So it's just a little bit skinnier and I really, really like that. So that's on the point and that's what just caught that fish first cast. And then on the top dropper, oh, I think that was a fish again. On the top dropper, I've got the pink collar pheasant tail which again is a fly we've changed slightly. Now the big change there is that actually I've changed the color of the bead. Originally it was it had a black bead on it. Now I sort of wanted a black bead in the pack. I will say actually I personally find the, the pink bead for grayling a bit more effective and that's why we've changed it. So a couple of alterations there that, that I think have just kind of pepped the packs up a little bit. Not huge things, but things that could make a difference. I was a bit worried that this wasn't going to get down because actually it is a slightly lighter rig that we had on before, but we are definitely touching the bottom. Ah, here's a debate for the comment section. So while these are lighter in terms of the beads, they are slimmer flies. There will be more dense flies than what I had on before. So there's a, there's a good comment section debate. Where are you on nymphs? Weight versus density. Could a skinny two and a half mil get down as quickly as a chunky three and a half mil? Fight that one out between yourselves in the comment section. I've got fish to catch. Well, for about 10 minutes, I tried moving above that spot and I didn't really find anything there. And then I tried another 10 minutes, 20 yards below that spot. And again, didn't really have anything else there either. So I've decided to just move on from that one and come and explore some more water. Uh, I've actually come down to a bit of a riffle. Now it's exactly the water I said I wasn't going to fish, but, <laughs> but here we are. I think it's worth a look. Um, just with the amount of bugs I've seen hatching in the last few days, just makes me wonder if some of these fish might have moved into feeding lies. I've also picked up the urine infant rod. It is the it is the right technique for this water, that's for sure. Got a deep purple on the point. I've got orange collar hairs here on the middle dropper, and I've got a soft pink tag on the top dropper. Now already it looks like possibly that deep purple is a bit too deep. We'll give it a couple more drifts, but I might just have to knock a little bit of weight off here. Well, that definitely did not work. Part of the deal of fishing this time of year is just sort of figuring out what kind of water they're sat in and what kind of water there aren't. I had a feeling they might not be so active in the riffly stuff today. And that has sort of reassured me that I'm right with that. So we've dropped down below that riffle into the, into the slower water as it runs out. I'm just gonna have a, a ping around with the indicator rig here. I think that this probably feels like more like the sort of stuff I was expecting to fish today. I'm going to give this a good going over, put plenty of casts in here and see if I can see if I can find a shoal. It's going to have to a pretty good start. It's been pretty dry since I wouldn't mind catching a fish here just to reassure myself I can still do it. There we go. It's taken a little bit of searching. One of the advantages of the one of the advantages of the indicator is you can search with it quite effectively. Just had to get to about halfway across there to find a fish. That's on that pink dub grub again. Get in there, finally. Jeez, that felt like a long time without a fish in the net. Little flapper, but 
We'll take it. It's been a long time without a fish. Hopefully he's got some friends. I could do a fine in a shoal of fish. The difficulty with a pool like this is it's all pretty good. There's quite a lot of space for a shoal to move around in here. It's going to be quite difficult to pin them down. As I say, with us having the, the indicator rig, could just cover a bit more water. Okay, so we're about halfway through my fishing day today and in truth I'm really not thrilled with how this is going. I just haven't quite figured it out. I feel like I know where these fish should be. I feel like they're in that, that slower, heavier stuff. But I keep not finding them there. I also didn't find them in the faster, riffly stuff either, which <laughs> creates me with a bit of a problem because now I don't know. Uh, and I'm starting to second guess things a little bit. This time of year, I do tend to lean on those slower bits as I say they're not going to sit and work really really hard in those riffles for nothing so I'm going to keep going with the slower bits just for the moment I just think it's worth a look quite happy sticking with the indicator in that water too I do think in the really slow stuff actually it gives you a much better presentation than the urine infant rig uh, having a tight line on that rig in slower water tends to draw the flies to you it tends to move the flies around a little bit whereas the indicator I can make slightly longer drifts I can make slightly slower drifts and I do think it is the way to go Really nice piece of water behind me. This is a pool that I really like fishing. I've had a lot of fish from here in the last few years. So I'm going to jump straight in here with that indicator rig. Let's see if we can find that shoal because once we do, it is game on. Okay, this is the one. This is the pool. I'm a big fan of the idea that when you're fishing well, it goes into an account and eventually it pays out. You just have to keep fishing well. And I don't really feel like I'm doing that much wrong. Just haven't been lucky enough to drop on a shoal yet. I'm convinced of it because otherwise I think I'd have caught them. Do look back and think, Maybe I could have spent a little bit longer in that first pool. Perhaps I just could have come back over the same area, but say so in terms of a video, it would have been pretty boring. So the first 20 minutes would have just been me stood in one spot. My plan here is to actually work across the cross section of the river rather than going anywhere up or down. I'm going to go across the things. There's two seams here. There's the one on the inside that I'm fishing, the one on the outside that I'm nowhere near. So rather than going up or down to start with, I'm actually going to go across and just see if I can figure out whereabouts in this pool are likely to be sat. I've stuck with those same two flies again. Oh, it's a good thing I did because they've worked. I've stuck with those same two flies again, the orange collar hairs here and the pink dub grub, just because they were the most effective pair at the start of the day. I'll tell you what, if this is a grayling, it's a good one. I'm not sure. This will be interesting. It's got some power. Oh, whatever it is, it's off. And I did absolutely nothing wrong there. Oh, gosh, dang it. I don't know. I never will know. Very, very strong fish, whatever it was. Okay, oak worm on the point. It's a little bit heavier than that pink dub grub. It's going to get down a little bit faster. I just don't believe I'm not covering fish at the moment. This looks so fishy. It looks absolutely perfect. There's a fish. There we go. That's taken maybe half a dozen drifts with that worm. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if it wasn't on that fly. Which again feels a good fish this. It's coming across the flow so you never really know for certain. It doesn't feel quite as hefty as the one that fell off that's for sure. Hopefully this one doesn't do that. Definitely feels like a grayling. Where are you, bud? Oh, we've done the full 360 again. A little pirouette. Gets him in a good position for me, actually. Yeah, it is a grayling, and it's actually on the, it's actually on the orange collar here, is it? Well, that was a nice surprise, because I sort of assumed that was going to be on the, on the squirmy, and it's not. It was on the, on the top drop, a nice fish, a bit of a handful. Could do with a few more of those, that's for sure. Very interesting. So I obviously there uh, just assumed that that was going to be on the worm because of the fly change, <laughs> just because of how many fish we catch on those worms. Actually quite a pleasant surprise to see that it wasn't. Maybe that slightly heavy red worm has just got the whole rig down a little bit more maybe. Maybe we're just fishing slightly lower in the water than we were before. Like stuff like that. That's really interesting that is. The orange collar hairs has been good today trying to get further and further into the into the seam over there into the mulch again I, I just don't think with the water temperatures being so low that there's going to be lots of fish sat in the fast stuff They're far more likely to be in this seamy stuff 
start to work back towards my bank, but I'm going to fish my way back over. So you've got a slightly different rig on now with that worm on the point. It's not impossible that as I've worked my way across, I've stirred up a little bit of mud or some food. You often get grading coming sitting right below you downstream of you. So I'm going to fish my way back. Yeah, so I made that move, come downstream a little bit, just to the part of the pool where it sort of starts to run out of steam a little bit. I'm hoping that this is where those sensible grayling are sat. Is that a fish? I think that's a fish. I think it's a fish. Crikey, that's taking a lot of drifts. I don't think it's a big fish, but I think it's a fish. That's taken some serious gouging out to get him to eat. I've made a lot of drifts on that line. Looks like a grayling. Looks silvery. I have to be a little bit careful in this place because there are some of the wild rainbows. It can be quite easy to think one thing's the other. Ah, the fact... No, it's not a grayling. Uh, what is that? It is indeed one of the wild rainbows. So they are out of season, but these guys don't spawn until spring, so... Well, I'm not going to do any big lift or anything. You can kind of catch these guys without too much guilt because they're not they're not spawning at the moment. Just sort of hoped it was going to be a grayling. That's all. Okay, so that was a bit further across maybe than most of the casts. So we'll try that line again. Yeah, that might do. Let's see. There we go, there's another one. Okay, I just threw those a bit further upstream off me down the middle, just to see if I could give them more chance to get down. Looks silver, I reckon that's gonna be a smaller grayling. It is indeed a smaller grayling, a welcome grayling. Don't like the word smaller, a very welcome grayling. On the worm again, get in that net. Where are you, chappy? There we go. Yeah, all I did there was just threw one a bit further up the middle with the extra line I got off the reel from making those casts across the river. And uh, he ate it just at the bottom of the drift. Now, if you'll stay still, mate, I'll get this squirming out of your gob. Come on. There we go. Nice wee grayling. Sweet. Well, I managed to pop off the red worm off the point fly there on a snag, so I've taken the opportunity just to keep moving downstream. I'm only 10, 15 yards down from where I was, but again, just changes the touch. It slows down even more. It's a bit more seamy. Ooh, what's that? Is that a fish? Yes, that is a fish. First cast in the new spot. That's what we like. That is what we like. I think that's on that top dropper as well. I think that's on the... Orange collar hair too. It is indeed. What's that? That's a grayling. Nice. Okay. Right. Good move. Hook came out of the net. That's handy. Where are you, bud? As long as the fish didn't come out of the net as well. Absolutely crackers. Oh, a lot of damage on that fish as well. Looks like it's healed. Okay. Oh, well, having caught one with the first cast on the spot move, I was sort of hoping that we found them here, but probably 10 minutes on from that now making good drifts I'm just not picking up fish it's as simple as that I'm just not picking them up oh I need to keep saying that because every time I say I'm not picking up fish that indicator goes under <laughs> oh my goodness I was honestly just about to move I was just about to say a couple more drifts and we're off because this ain't happening and then from absolutely nowhere we've hooked another fish on the worm and it's a grayling Good stuff, okay. Ah, it's so hard to know whether to stick or twist on days like this. It's taken me a full 10 minutes there to find this guy. It's a lovely fish, healthy, fat fish. As I say, I was seconds away there from saying I'm about to move. And that's now gonna pin me here for another five minutes, I reckon, just in case I can find another one. What strange days fishing this has been so far. Just can't, just can't figure out where they are or what they want. Well, that last fish there just kept me in the pool for another five minutes beyond what I thought
thought I was going to and didn't produce another fish. It just hasn't quite happened in terms of finding numbers of fish. Come down to a completely different piece of water now on the face of it. You might be thinking, wow, that looks really, really fast, but actually just beyond the fast water, there's a big heavy seam. I'm going to urinate this seam. Just try and get a try and get a red worm down there alongside a flash hare's ear. I've got one of the four and a half mil point flies on the point. Oh, that's a terrible cast, Andy. Four and a half mil point flies on the point, just to try and anchor that thing down nice and early. Oh, there's a fish. Wow. Crikey. What the hook's here? That felt really solid to start with. I don't think it's quite as big as I thought. Just when I hooked it, it felt like an absolute monster. A uh, bit weird for me. I'm actually going to try and play this fish back up the seam. Try and avoid playing him through the fast water below me because if he gets ahead of steam in down there, I'm just never going to see it again. Bring him up through the slower water. It's quite unusual to be stood in faster water fishing into slow when you're urine infant. He's coming this way. Just once he's, once he's within netting range, absolutely anything could happen here. If I could just back off towards my bank a little bit. It's this point here where he's in the fast stuff. Will he come across for me? Come on, bud. Let's get you in and out as quickly as possible. Ah, now he's below me. This is exactly what I was trying to avoid. This time we will switch this way because there's a little slack on the inside bank that I might be able to draw him into. Oh no, it's a rainbow. He's in the net. As I said earlier, even though these guys are strictly speaking out of season, don't feel quite as guilty catching them at this time of year because they're not spawning yet. It's a really nice example actually of a wild rainbow trout. It was until he went flying off. Well, I'm not always very good at knowing when I'm beaten, but unfortunately, I think that's probably that one about done. What a weird day. What an interesting day in many ways. A slightly frustrating one in truth. Uh, I said at the start that I thought I'd be finding fish in the slower, heavier water. And when I look back, in terms of the grayling, certainly, I don't think I've caught a grayling in fast water. And I don't think I've caught a grayling on the Euro rig at all, all day. Don't get me wrong, I've definitely fished the indicator rod a bit more. But certainly in terms of where I thought I'd find the fish, I was right. I just didn't find it anywhere near the quantity of fish that I thought I was going to. I was sort of hoping we'd rock upon a shoal at some point and we'd catch numbers of fish out of a pool, perhaps numbers of fish out of a couple of pools. And all of a sudden it's quite easy to do 20, 25 fish days at this time of year. It just hasn't happened. I never found that shoal. I never even felt like I'd sort of crack the code as to where those shoals were sat. Because certainly I don't feel like I've gone over one very often today. Always interesting to see the kind of indicator versus Euro stuff. It's a pretty hot debate. I, I tend to bring both of them with me during the winter for exactly the reason that you've seen today. Uh, sometimes those fish just aren't in the faster or the riffly stuff and it's very, very difficult to fish the Euro rig effectively in very slow water, particularly in slow deep water because you need the weight of the flies to get down. But if it's slow water, as soon as they get down, they just stop. You're striking at nothing all the time. So the indicator rig is a great option for when you're fishing those slower bits or if you want to get slightly longer drifts and fish slightly lighter flies, which is what we've done quite a lot of today. Guys, I would have loved for this to have been an absolute banger today. Unfortunately, I just haven't quite been able to make it happen. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's taken me two days to film this video and it's cost me a set of waders. So please do hit that like button. As ever, please don't forget about the web shop www.abanglin.co.uk forward slash shop. Uh, that's where you'll find all the flies that we've used today. As I said, we've given the Grayling packs a bit of a glow up for this year. Uh, it's where you'll find all the merch, the bobble hats, the bus. We've got the caps. We've got everything. Everything is there. Everything you need in your life is at that web shop. So head over there right now. Folks, thank you very much again for watching this video. Really appreciate it. I know it's been a while since we put a fishing video out there, but hopefully you guys understand there'll be another video that will have explained what's been going on in IB and Andy land and why things have been a bit quiet. But I'm going to try and make sure for 2023 that we are back making more videos than ever, out fishing more than ever and sharing it more than ever with you guys who we very much appreciate. Take care and I be and I will see you again soon for some more fishing and stuff. Thanks a lot folks. Bye bye.